Hello, I'm Preston McCauley and welcome to AI Quick. Today I'm going to be showing you some examples of how to use large language models in unique, fun, and exciting use cases. So sit back, relax, and enjoy! All right, well, let's get started. So I have a special episode today. Uh, I'm actually going to go over looking at the latest changes that came out in LM Studio. Uh, I've actually had a lot of uh, opportunity to test this version early on, uh, provide as much feedback as I possibly could into the ecosystem. And I'm really excited that uh, it's now out and it's available and I can talk about some of these things and really show how uh, this may transform how you work uh, with any number of local AI systems. So it's definitely a huge step up. All right, so some of the first things that you're gonna see here are you can download the various versions here of uh, 3.0. You can start off with either a version for an M1, M2, M3, Mac Pro. You can also go ahead and download one for Windows uh, or Linux if you have Linux. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and be, I'm on my Windows machine today, so I'm going to actually download the Windows version. After you've clicked on the link, download it, give a little bit of time to install. Now what this is doing behind the scenes is setting up some of the complexities that allows you to actually run these models uh, locally on your system. And so here we are, just like that, we have the brand new uh, system up and running. Uh, interface is a little bit different here. You have three levels of users that they've set up. You have user mode, which kind of hides a lot of the other parts of the interface. Power user gives you a little bit more capability and flexibility in some of the UI. And then developer. So I'm going to start here at just the basic user mode here. You'll notice you have a chat window, which just is very simple. And you'll have a folder. Now the folder capability is really new here. so. You might use this to organize, you know, the difference between work, chats, and the difference between personal. Uh, keep in mind, when you're using a program like LM Studio, you're using local models, which means you're using everything on your local system. Nothing should be going out to the internet. The only time you're connecting to the internet with these types of systems is when you're going to download a model. Now, there's a number of different models that you can use here, okay? So the first model I'm going to go ahead and use is going to be uh, my favorite one right now, which is currently a Meta, and it's a Llama 3.1 Instruct model. There are many other models that you can download. Uh, I already have this one set up. So in user mode, just a matter of you know the time it takes to download, you're off to the races, and you can start using this model right out of the gate. So let's. Start with a haiku. And just like that, it's running locally on my system. Now, what was added to this, in which is different from um, the other systems, is now we have the ability to do reg, retrieval augmented generation, directly inside of LM Studio. We didn't have this capability before, and this opens up a whole lot of new possibilities. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this out. So the first thing we're gonna do is click here. There's a new little brief introduction about how reg process works. Uh, talking to you about the files that you can upload up to five files. Here's the type of files you can use. Uh, and it also tells you a little bit about grounding. What grounding is, is essentially how you can talk with the model uh, and with the content. And it shows you a little bit of technique there. Uh, and then it... All right, so we're gonna go ahead and select one of these files that I have. Uh, just to kind of show you the thought process here is uh, I've always been interested in quantum computers so I found a interesting file out here that I actually know nothing about so I'm gonna go ahead and select that file go back over to LM studio here and I'm gonna open it it's about three megabytes in size okay and I'm just gonna say what are the key points in this summary <clears throat> or in this uh, file on quantum computers. Okay, so now what that does in the background is it's actually embedding the file so that it can be used uh, to communicate with. And then just in a moment here, uh, you see the response based on the private citations. I will summarize the key points related to quantum computers from the given text. Okay, 
So just like that, I can access a wide variety of information in my file, and I can even check out which citations were grounded here. Uh, so I can understand, you know, where did this uh, content generation come from in relation to the file. So really great new addition to this application. Uh, it really helps people uh, be able to talk with their documents locally on their system and uh, you don't have to put really anything into the cloud to do that so it all stays locally. Uh, a number of new features. So that is one of the probably the biggest feature additions here that uh, you will see. But if you look over here, I also can organize my chat. I'll put that over here and I can go ahead and rename this as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this just a quantum ray discussion, okay? And I can continue to have discussions with this is what should I know about uh, quantum computers? Say one source, okay? Uh, so it's picking about UPS, the system, the power supplies, things like that. And I can also add more documents into the mix as well. Now, that's not all there is because I collapsed this area over here and this is my, what I said is the simple version. But if we go over to Power User, you see I get a few more tools that come up. Now, this allows you to look at a number of different models. Um, they've done a much better job organizing it and pulling some of the model information. Most of this comes from Hugging Face uh, and uh, even has some little helpful guides here like what are they for, which one should I download, it explains about what quantization is. So uh, very helpful, uh, especially to anyone new to this uh, ecosystem is really going to help them understand this and feel uh, comfortable. Uh, in addition, you'll see there's some other models like Lava. Lava is a model for vision. Uh, we have, of course, Meta Llama 3, and we have Mistral Nemo. But if you were first coming in here for the first time and you saw this view, I would start off with uh, kind of the current model of the day. It would be a Meta Llama 3.1 and probably a Q6 or a Q5. And then all you do is you select the model. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, the Gemma 2B model as well. You select it. It's a Q4 model. If I click in this drop down here, I'm going to see different quantizations. It's a tough word to say. Uh, and for my particular system, I know I can run pretty decent a Q5. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and download that. Now it's going to take just a minute to download it because these models are all self contained. And what I mean by self contained is all of the, uh, all of the content that is within the model basically think of it as the brain of the model is all within inside of that particular container. So when you're working with that, you're kind of talking directly with that. It's like talking to a, a person that's just an expert on many, many different topics. All right, we'll give that just a second here to load. Uh, after that's loaded in, you can see we've got this new download screen as well, which is a new addition. We can go ahead and we can uh, choose that model. So we could go back to our chat and I could choose the new model that we just downloaded here and load it. Now you might have seen a few more things pop up on the screen there when I open it up because I'm in power user mode, right? Now you also see, I'm gonna select the model again just to show you these other items. So most of the models uh, are about 8,000 context, although Llama Usually I try to run one that has 128,000 contexts. This basically means that uh, you can support a lot of different information within there. So the larger the token context length is, the more capable this is and the more of a longer time of conversation you're gonna be able to have with this model as well. These other settings here allow you to actually set your GPU specifically if you kind of know what that needs to be set at. And in addition to that, we also have the batch size, which allows you to tell how many poken, excuse me, tokens can be set, and a few other different settings that, uh, unless you're really familiar with this, you probably don't want to mess too much with these because they will uh, cause some, some issues sometimes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just remember my settings and, and reload my model.
notice it's loading up here. Perfect. And let's just go ahead and, and test it out. Write me a Cinequin poem. Okay. All right. Uh, and just like that, we have uh, something that is uh, poetic. Now, of course, you can do any other number of things with this model from data analysis to, you know, generating content structure structures of any type. Uh, I'm just giving you a quick walkthrough of how to use this tool overall. So the Discover tab, as I mentioned, is really new, has a lot of great things within this. Now, when we get to the developer mode, which is also available even in Power User, you'll see there's a whole bunch more parameters here. Now, if you are a developer like myself and you're working on some really cool things using these LM systems locally, you can enable cores so that your API can talk to the systems. You can serve things on a local network and you can also uh, see the output from the model. So what this does is it basically turns the LM Studio into a server that allows you to be able to uh, access it and uh, request code and responses from it. In addition, you can check out more complex areas where there's system resources, memory, and monitoring that's been added as well. There's the ability to understand um, the color themes. If you wanted to change your color, you can play with different colors. That's a new feature as well. Uh, uh, you can also change the language. Uh, that's a new feature that's still a little bit in beta. Uh, and you can also set the default state of the interface. So there's a lot of cool things here. I have some previous chats that I could also migrate over from earlier versions because they changed the way that ecosystem works. Now, I have a lot of models as well, so I can also see the models here. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the last version here, which is developer. And developer is gonna open up some more debug tools over here. So you can uh, see kind of how your model's performing. You can look at parameters. Uh, which are basically the ability to kind of tweak the model as response. Uh, you can look at context, those same items that you looked at before, resize the interface. Like I mentioned, I've been using this quite a bit. I usually tend to stay in power user mode um, and you know start with a new chat and then kind of stay contextually in that. But just in a few moments, you're kind of off to the races and ready to go. And one of the things that I really like here is you, know, you can also modify your system prompts really quickly if you wanted to do different system prompt structures. They've done a really good job of grouping the data now here so it's easier to see general, response, stop strings, and things like that. Also choose your conversation type method. You can also even set your temperature parameters. So typically, I usually, if I'm working on something a little bit more truthful or grounded, I might go down to around a 0 0.25, 25, 35, et cetera. If I'm working on something that's gonna be more related to what I would consider uh, less truth and a little bit more creativity, I would push it up a little bit more there. And then I can add notes about the conversation and then I can even change the different type of view state that I want here. I tend to run in put markdown because it gives you a better format. just so you can see the difference between this here. And you can go to uh, mode, plain text, and you'll notice with Markdown, it kind of tells the model already automatically that it wants to use Markdown uh, as part of its, its instructions. And so that kind of gives you this nice formatted structure, uh, or you could do monospace, etc. In addition to this, you'll notice that each uh, element tells how many tokens were utilized, tokens that were done, first tokens, etc. This all goes back to how many tokens this conversation can have. So as you get further along in a conversation, things are truncated and that means that you're going to lose parts of the conversation. If you move a little bit further here, you can go ahead and see that you could regenerate the message just in one fell swoop like that. You could also branch chat. Now, why might you want to branch chat is if your conversation is getting too long and you still want to keep some of the meaning of it. That's exactly why you would want to do that. 
And of course you can delete and you can clean up over here. So that's it. That's pretty much the rundown of the system. I know there's probably a few more features out there, but if you're a first time user of this type of tool, you're definitely gonna go wanna give this a try. You wanna start out by using the, the user mode here and then getting your first model ready to go. So you can download one uh, and you can also type and filter in here. I recommend starting with the Llama 3.1 model. Uh, probably a Q6 is the best one, I think, that I tend to use and it doesn't really slow things down and it runs really fast. And uh, the new conversation capability, if you wanna push a little bit more and play with some of the parameters and explore different models, like the vision models that you can play with, uh, you can go ahead and do that there. And you're off and uh, just like that, you're using uh, all locally, some very complex seven billion parameter plus models with the new LM Studio. So I hope that uh, you learned a lot from this really quick video. And uh, as always, uh, I hope that if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. This is a fabulous tool.